Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and from boxings.com here looking at the Sony Ericsson Xperia Neo. Uh, we actually saw this a couple of months ago around about the same time as the Xperia Arc and Xperia Play was launched and uh, this is actually just coming onto the market right now. So we're going to do an unboxing video and a little, little demo before we do our full review. So in the top portion of the box we've got uh, uh, bits about pre-installed software. We've got uh, your first hour, or my first hour as it's called, with the, the Neo, which covers all of the getting started, putting the battery in, SIM card, and uh, using the interface, including multi-touch and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's your getting started guide. There's also a headset, which we can just take a quick look at. So there are a number of different sized earbuds and the actual headset itself uh, which has a four pole three and a half mil jack on one end which means obviously you can use it or you'll be able to use your own headphones uh, with the headset or with the handset rather uh, there's an inline microphone with a push button and then the actual headphones themselves which aren't bad they're proper in-ear style for the in-ear canal and uh, they're okay and then have the handset itself which is in this green heart pouch and we're going to come back to that in just a second once we've finished unloading all of the bits from the box and we're just left with the Sony Ericsson uh, pretty typical style USB charger so it plugs into the wall and then you've got a USB socket on the side and then we have USB cable which is a USB, standard USB to micro USB sync and charge. So that's everything in the box. Take a look at the handset itself. Uh, I'm going to leave the uh, little screen protector on the front just for now. Uh, on the top we have the speaker, then a forward facing camera for video conferencing, a couple of sensors on either side there, so that's the ambient light sensor, proximity sensor and that sort of stuff. The display is a 3.7 inch display, it's 480 by 854 pixels, so slightly larger, taller than the standard uh, WVGA at, uh, with a, you know, 854 rather than um, 800 pixels. Below that we have three buttons rather than maybe the typical four, so we have back, home and search, uh, whereas typically there's four on the bottom of an Android handset, but these are physical buttons rather than uh, capacitive touch buttons. On the left hand side, we really have absolutely nothing to see there. Uh, that cover isn't quite on properly there. Let's pop that back on. There we go. So the side there is uh, chrome on the side, which is what, rather a nice, attractive finish, but no buttons on the side. On the bottom, uh, a small hole there, which is uh, actually the microphone, and just the barest amount that you can probably just pick up there of um, the actual colour is actually a very, very dark blue with uh, just little flecks of uh, metallic finish to it as well. So uh, from front on, it looks almost entirely black, but as the light catches it, you can see that it's very dark blue. On this side, on the right, we have a dedicated camera button, up and down volume control and a power button, and below that also is just an LED, which does indicate when it's on charge, um, also tells us when it's fully charged and so on. On the top, a three and a half mil headphone connector right in the center, then on either side of that we have covers over the micro USB connector there so we can obviously sync and charge through that side and on the other side there is a micro HDMI connector so that you can plug into your widescreen TV or projector or whatever it might be to actually output um, the display and everything else and movies, everything, in fact the whole display is mirrored onto uh, through HDMI onto your TV. On the back there's an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash and the camera incorporates the Exmor technology which uh, you would typically find on um, Sony's uh, cameras uh, that are throughout the range really so uh, the quality of uh, Sony's uh, Cybershot cameras has actually been bought to Sony Ericsson uh, Xperia Neo as we saw on um, also the Arc so that has actually been brought to this and it's a quite, an, quite a good technology it means that it works in extremely low light and captures extremely fast uh, when you're actually taking a, taking a photo the capture is pretty quick it's quite central to the back really um, whereas typically you'd find the cameras sort of placed in corners on um, other handsets so quite central to the back um, so that when we're actually taking pictures there 
I suppose you're probably less likely to cover the camera with your fingers and it's quite recessed in the back there, I'm not sure if you can really see how far back that is but it's quite well recessed again which protects the camera itself, the lens and also stops you putting your fingers over it because there's nothing worse than actually going to take a picture with your camera from your phone and realising you've got fingerprints and dust all over it which um, typically I do myself, I must admit with my, uh, my iPhone I've always got fingerprints over it and whenever I want to use it I have to rub it so that helps uh, to protect that little bit there and uh, dedicated camera button means that it sort of feels a little bit more like a normal camera. Um, you can see a little bit more there in terms of the actual design and the colour. Uh, the fade from black to uh, this very dark blue at the bottom which is, makes it just a little bit more interesting. And the design itself is pretty cool. I really do like the design. It feels really nice in the palm of your hand. The ergonomics there as you can see mean that it just does fit nicely in the palm of the hand and uh, it just again makes it look visually quite interesting too and especially the way the reflection works there as you can see it, it, does, it is a nice handset in that respect back cover just peels off like so it is a fairly plastic back cover and underneath we have uh, a micro SD card slot there with the micro SD card already in place battery is already in place but that pops out to allow us to get to the SIM card slot there so the SIM card just pushes in the gap there and then the battery pops back in afterwards. Um, battery capacity is 1500 mAh so a fairly decent battery capacity. We'll pop the back cover back on like so. I'll squeeze it carefully all the way around. There we go. To cover that all up. Yeah. And we'll just power on. And while we wait for the startup, let me run down the rest of the specification. Quad band for GSM, dual band for HSDPA, it'll work most places in actual fact, it's pretty decent. In terms of size, 116mm from top to bottom, 57mm wide and at the thickest point, which includes the little bubble bit at the back there, that you can see, um, it is just uh, under 13mm. Weighs 126 grams. actually feels lighter than that, but I think that has a lot to do with the ergonomics and the actual design, so it does feel quite lightweight in the hand. 1 GHz Snapdragon processor, uh, Scorpion processor in fact, with uh, Adreno uh, GPU and uh, 512 meg of RAM and 320 meg of available ROM. I think uh, the actual ROM size may be uh, larger but in terms of what is user accessible it's only 320 meg. Uh, obviously you can use much more storage than that uh, if you um, use the micro SDHC memory card which supports up to 32 meg. Uh, has Bluetooth 2.1 with A2DP support, uh, Wi-Fi support with A2O211BG and N standards, built-in GPS, FM radio with RDS, um, all the other bits and pieces really that you would expect. Um, 8 megapixel autofocus camera on the back will record 720p video as well, and then the forward-facing camera as we've already mentioned. Um, for me, the the size of the display, 3.7 inches, just about right. Um, I don't like the large screen devices and um, so I think this is uh, you know, kind of just right, or just at that sort of sweet spot. Uh, but that's one that's uh, very much a, a matter of personal opinion. Um, so if you can see the display there, uh, whoop, wrong button, there we go, and we just unlock. Uh, you'll see that uh, in terms of what the o how the overlay works, um, we'll agree to all the usage and everything else. Uh, it looks very similar to the Xperia Arc that we looked at not so long ago and uh, with the overlay with Timescape here. So on the main screen we've got the Google search with a voice search. Um, because we're not signed into a wireless network on no SIM card, it's not going to update here, but this is the Timescape. So this would bring things like um, Facebook and Twitter, uh, your accounts here with updates, um, sort of this Rolodex style affair. On the other panel we have uh, a music uh, media, so we have pre-installed um, sample music, BBC iPlayer there as well and some sample images again in this sort of Rolodex style uh, interface there in the center which is obviously part of a widget that we've got there and uh, we have then uh, music uh, photos, uh, no I think it's music, yeah, music photos and uh, video there uh, sort of as a widget and then we've got a... there we go sample video that we can actually play at yeah, some other time. <laughs> uh, so the other widget, we've got a nice large digital clock and uh, about uh, experience more which is basically 
uh, learning a bit more about how the handsets works, copying contacts and recommendations, all that kind of stuff. And then we have a blank page, and then finally we have some widgets here, one that uh, represents Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, the loudspeaker, backlight brightness, which we can change between maximum and minimum, and then the synchronization. You can allow you to turn synchronization on and off, uh, which is pretty useful if you're roaming um, or if you want to conserve your uh, data usage. Underneath media messaging, contacts and phone are the four main icons and then the centre one actually brings up your full list of applications. So we have in here pretty standard stuff. So we've got Timescape, the actual application rather than the widget. Facebook pre-installed, Android Market Maps, all that sort of stuff. Um, on the second page we have Gmail, Google Talk, uh, Sync WhatsApp is pre-installed there as you can see, Let's Golf and uh, actual YouTube client. And then finally, as I say, the BBC iPlayer is already there, FM Radio, uh, UEFA.com, Office Suite, uh, the Play Now store as well as you can see there, Liveware as well. So a few things already installed for us to play with. We can actually customise these as well, so if we push the button in the corner, they float, as you can see they wobble around, so I can say, well actually, I use the calendar quite a lot, so I'm going to move that right up the top next to the phone. Um, and uh, I can actually go ahead and I can change the order and I can show that show it in my own order, alphabetical order, most used, recently installed, all that kind of stuff as well. And if I want to, I can go ahead and set up folders and various other things like that, which just means that you can customise it a little bit too. Uh, going back home, obviously there are widgets that we can install. So there's additional widgets here that allow us to show data traffic. That's quite a useful widget, so if we're on a uh, limited tariff, we can actually see um, how much we're using, very useful. Um, Timescape track ID and a few other things there. Of course you can download, download more widgets through Android Market as well, so um, there's pretty much no limit to what you can do. Um, I'm going to just quickly go ahead and just look at a couple of things. So go into the settings menu and turn on wireless. Turn Wi-Fi on. We'll just find add a Wi-Fi network, which should come up. There we go. And I'm just going to quickly sign in. As you can see, uh, a fairly standard QWERTY keyboard there, Android style QWERTY keyboard, which will also work in the landscape orientation, which obviously makes it just that much larger. So I'm going to quickly sign in. And there we go, we're attaining an IP address. We should connect in a second or so. There we are, and then we are connected. So that means that we can now go into here, take a quick look at the browser. And that's loading pretty quickly. Obviously using broadband here. But um, let's go to our site and see how quickly that loads and renders. There we go. With one of the suggestions there already. So loading extremely fast, progress bar moving rapidly along the top. And wow, that rendered really quickly. So, um, pretty fast. I mean, I am using broadband and Wi-Fi, so I would expect it to load pretty quickly, but the rendering speed is also really fabulous. The display is really very, very good. Um, it uh, does use Bravia technology, but I think that is limited really to the uh, video playback rather than to the actual whole uh, experience that you get with the display. Uh, could be wrong, but I think the actual Bravia engine is really limited to video playback. But that said, the display is nice and clear and bright. Uh, it is a LED backlit LCD uh, rather than AMOLED or anything like that. But uh, colors are really good. Um, I think you know, in recent times, uh, LCD has had um, everybody turn up the brightness and everybody turn up basically the, the color. Um, to make it compete with AMOLED, so uh, it's very good. And even the small text on that display, which you're probably not going to be able to see just uh, with the camera, but I can tell you either uh, with my naked eye, bringing the handset reasonably close to my face, I can actually read the text even on that. So I can turn it that way then, there's no problem at all, We're using two fingers for zooming in and out. As you'd expect, it's a standard browser, um, nothing terribly um, different about it, it works quite well. Um, but, uh, you know, double tap to zoom into an area, double tap to zoom back out, um, and it works quite nicely. Uh, Android browser is extremely good, I think, in general, so um, say this one works extremely well. 
settings we've already been into, sorry, let's just come back out of there and go to uh, maps to see if we've picked up a GPS location and if so, if not, how quickly it does. Um, so we'll go into settings and we use GPS and we use wireless networks. In fact, we're just going to use GPS. We're not going to cheat. There we go and let's see. It's saying waiting for location. I'll give it a second or two. Obviously I'm indoors, so some handsets not so happy to pick up a GPS signal indoors. You can see in the top corner or top bar there, it's working kind of hard to try and find GPS signal, uh, but it hasn't done so. Putting the top dark bar down, I've got no notifications at the moment anyway. So uh, we'll abandon that for now. As I say, indoors, many handsets find it fairly difficult to actually pick anything up. We will take a quick look at YouTube. I know everybody wants to take a quick look at the YouTube client. Whilst it is a standard Android YouTube client, it is good. It's worth a look. So looking for Leo D, which is my uh, YouTube alias or YouTube username. You can see some of my videos on here. So let's just pick uh, anyone at random. That will do. And see how quickly that buffers. Ah, buffering pretty quickly. If I turn it this way around, it will automatically full screen. If I turn it back this way, still plays in line, but then I've got uh, all the information underneath, related videos, comments, uh, other bits and pieces. More, I can actually go here and save to favorites, copy URL, share, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like the YouTube client on Android. Um, I think it's the best client on the mobile, but um, I'm sure the others will kind of catch up at some point. Android Market, and I'm going to sign into that very quickly, just so that we can see the mail synchronize and come down as well. So let me sign in. There we go, when we sign in, it makes us accept the terms and conditions, which we're going to just quickly do. Let that load up, which hopefully, there we go, doesn't take a minute or two. So we have the Android Market, as you can see there, we have a section for apps and games. I'm sure most people have seen the Android Market before. We've got the Sony Ericsson area, if you like, being obviously a Sony Ericsson phone. So these are your Sony Ericsson specifics or your Sony Ericsson uh, recommendations as well. HTC have a similar thing as well, which they call the HTC Likes, but that allows us to actually go and have a look in there. Uh, if I pull down the top bit there, it's telling me that there are updates available. So there's an update for Google Maps, Gmail, YouTube, and ROM Manager. Um, I won't download those just now, but um, they're there to be downloaded later. And in here, I swipe across my Gmail. Um, Gmail, oh, it's just waiting to synchronize there. But in signing into Android Market, it will actually synchronize my Gmail as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, in terms of what else we've got, the BBC iPlayer. Let's just quickly load that. And as you can see there, we can look at, uh, well, features and favorites, TV, radio, all that kind of stuff. And uh, let's just see if quickly, yes, I'm over 16, slightly. There we go, and just allow that to play. Let's see how quickly that buffers again. So, pretty quick. A uh, little bit of buffer time, but there we go. So it allows us to obviously watch BBC's content over the iPlayer. So that's pretty cool. So let's have a very quick look at the Xperia Actually, I won't just quickly finish. I just forgot about the camera. So uh, does the camera launch when you push the side button? Yes, it does. So let's take a quick shot um, of something colourful. Not my favourite toy. I've gone off this one. Um, but it's just nice and bright and colourful just to give us... Um, a quick snap, so let's see. Yeah, it snaps reasonably quickly. And if we take a quick look, there we go. So the color is extremely bright. Um, very strong colour there. Um, it's not going to come across too well on the video because obviously it's display to video, video display and all that kind of stuff. Um, but when I come to do the full review, of course I will do 
uh, quite a few sample photos of both uh, bright stuff, indoors, outdoors, uh, macro and flash and all that cool, kind of stuff as well. But um, we'll play around with the video a bit as well in terms of um, recording some uh, 720p video and uh, some other bits and pieces. So that uh, is a quick look at the Sony Ericsson Xperia Neo. have a full review for you over the coming weeks. In the meantime, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt or facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt.co.uk. Feel free to ask any questions about the Xperia Neo or indeed any other handsets or anything really that we're looking at or talking about just at the moment and we'll do our best to uh, come back to you. I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracymat.co.uk, but for now, thanks for watching. Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with Unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.